you want to get more out of HubSpot, using workflows to power some of the things behind the scenes in your portal is a good place to start. But with so many possibilities, how do you know where to begin? Well, these five marketing workflows will help you get some more power out of HubSpot and actually deliver you more leads in a few cases and clean up some records. So in this video, I'm going to have my associate Alexis walk you through her favorite five HubSpot marketing workflows. Keep in mind, you have to have professional or enterprise to do these, but she's going to go ahead and show you how it's done. Let's dive in. Today, I'm going to be walking you through five essential marketing workflows that we think every HubSpot portal should have. So we're going to start off and make sure we're in the right section. So under our automations, we're going to be our way to workflows and we're going to go ahead and create a workflow from scratch. So the first one I'll be walking you through is making sure that after someone signs up for a newsletter that they are able to get um, at least one welcome email, potentially a whole welcome series here uh, so that they get that confirmation that they are in fact signed up for your newsletter. So we are going to start with a contact based workflow here and we're going to set up our trigger and we're going to use an event based trigger so that we can make sure this happens every time that they submit that newsletter form submission. So we're going to come and search for our form submission and then go ahead and add in our form name for our newsletter form and hit done. So now we know that they have submitted the newsletter sign up form. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn on that re-enrollment so that if in the future they unsubscribe and decide to come back and want to join the newsletter again, they can go through that uh, same welcome series again. Or if you don't want them to, then you can turn it off. So that'll just depend on you and if you plan on updating this content later in the future. So we'll go ahead and save that uh, enrollment trigger here. Then we're going to build in our steps and we're going to make sure that we send them that first welcome email. So we're going to go and grab that and hit save. So as soon as they submit that form, we'll go ahead and get them that welcome email. And then depending on how much content you might be able to uh, produce for that welcome series, we can go ahead and create a series of delays um, to trickle, you know, maybe a couple uh, throughout the week, maybe a couple throughout the month, just to kind of get them a little bit more familiar, um, either about what to expect, about your product, different promotion, industry news, uh, depends on what the content of that's going to be. So we can do you know, an email every couple of days here, really just build that out uh, kind of based on what your team is capable of being able to produce for that content there. So I'm just going to repeat the same one here. I didn't create a second uh, welcome series email, but if we did, we'd be able to stagger those throughout here um, and just making sure that again, they at least get this first one to really welcome them and they understand that they did in fact sign up for a newsletter. This newsletter does exist. Uh, so many times we do see we sign up for something and then, you know, maybe six months later, we've heard back from them on their first newsletter. If it's not something on like a regular weekly cadence, monthly, um, maybe even quarterly, it could be a long time before you get that next email. So at least getting them something here to welcome them uh, will kind of set some expectations here. Moving on to our next workflow, we're going to go over making sure that not only are uh, maybe they on a list that's just based on that form submission, but that we actually formally have their subscription settings um, in HubSpot so they can properly opt in or opt out of different subscriptions. So again, we're going to create another workflow here using that contact based workflow. Now, this will differ depending on, you know, you may have a opt in um, checkbox for that subscription on your newsletter form, you might not. So we really are going to use in this example, uh, the exact same sort of trigger here of seeing that they submitted that form for that newsletter subscription, or maybe you have a couple of different variants for different types of things that they can opt into. Um, but for this one, I'm just going to use the exact same criteria that I used before. So we're going to go ahead and use our newsletter sign up saving that. And this time for our steps, we are going to be making sure we manage their communication subscription here. So we want to make sure that we have them on our email list. If you do have a text list, there is an option there for that WhatsApp. But we're going to go ahead and do email. We're going to subscribe them. And then we can pick from any of our marketing subscriptions that we have available. So I'm just going to use our marketing email one here for our newsletter. And then our um, basis for communicating with them is, you know, essentially these are most likely a lead or we can say just freely given um, consent since they did in fact sign up for that form there. 
then we'll go ahead and save that subscription uh, status. And if we didn't already have that step in our uh, form as well, we'll wanna make sure that they are also a marketing contact. So we can also do that here as well um, by setting their marketing contact status and making sure that they are in fact a marketing contact uh, so that they can receive those marketing emails when we're ready to send those out. So might not need this step depending on your form settings. Usually that is where you're gonna go have and head that set, but just in case you don't, this can give you kind of that double check back that they are going to be listed uh, for us to get those emails. Moving on to number three, we're going to talk about webinar promotion and making sure that we are also using goals, which isn't always used a lot of times uh, when I'm looking into what clients have in their workflow settings. So we're gonna come and create another workflow here. Once again, this is also gonna be contact-based. So a lot of our marketing workflows are in fact gonna be contact-based compared to our sales ones, uh, which might be more deal-based, quote-based, or something like that. All right, so for this one, we are looking at, um, you know, wanting to make sure we get people set um, up for our promotions for an upcoming webinar. So this one's likely gonna be based on filtered criteria. So if you already have some lists set up uh, for potential leads and things like that, that's usually going to be uh, the best case. Uh, otherwise you can kind of build that list criteria individually using a bunch of contact properties. But for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and use our same newsletter segment um, that we currently use because uh, it's kind of the same general basis for us uh, if you're on our newsletter list, you're also most likely interested in our webinars. So for us, that makes that nice and easy to grab that list of membership uh, for us to go ahead and build this out. And once again, we're going to build in those steps of using our promotional emails here. So we're going to send an email and I'm going to go grab an old promo here that we've got going on and save that. And again, we can create this in a series where we, you know, we reach out with the different promotions. Uh, maybe it's the same email, maybe it's slightly different. Maybe we use some smart content here. And so we can schedule these out with a couple of delays. We can pick, you know, a very particular day. So if we want to make sure, um, you know, it's leading up to, uh, you know, 10 days in advance, 14 days in advance, something like that, so that we're really hitting the marks um, of that upcoming webinar we can go ahead and schedule exactly what day and what time we want to go ahead and send out those different email segments. So we can build this out as much as we'd like here. I'm gonna just grab another promotional email here. There we go. So we can build this out as long as we want to go ahead and triple them. But the key to this workflow is we're going to make sure that we actually turn on some unenrollment, uh, which isn't used a lot. Usually we're talking about re-enrollment, but we want to make sure that if they sign up, we're not continuing to tell them, hey, sign up for our upcoming webinar. We already know that they have. So we're going to use this contact meets a goal as a way to make sure that we understand uh, that they've done exactly what we needed them to do. And now we also get some reporting. So we use Zoom webinars for um, ours in particular. So I'm going to make sure that they are registered for an particular um, event. And I'm going to just base that off of our webinar ID. So I would go and grab this from um, our Zoom account and actually see what the upcoming webinar ID is. I'm just going to type in a little example here. Uh, so we want to make sure if they have, in fact, registered for this webinar, then they're good to go. They don't need to receive any more promotions especially if this is going to be a longer drip over a long period of time with a couple um, series of emails. So that is it. Super easy to set that up, making sure once they register, we can kick them out of this workflow and we're not continuously bugging them um, on top of our other things that we might be sending out with just our regular newsletter or um, you know, company updates and things. Next workflow, we are going to talk about making sure that we update our lifecycle stages uh, accordingly based on, um, in this case, we're going to use our lead score. So once again, we will be starting our workflow here from scratch and using a contact based workflow. Now, this might need to have a wider conversation as a marketing team to figure out making sure you have the right definitions for what's a lead, what's an MQL, and how do people move from one to the next to kind of figure out exactly what all of the details of your enrollment criteria need to be. Um, so that's something to have further discussions on or reach out to us if you have some questions on trying to figure out what that should be. But we are going to go ahead and base ours off of a lead score or a HubSpot uh, lead score. So we're going to search for that as our criteria here. And we're going to look for that HubSpot score. 
and we're going to make sure it's greater than let's say 20 for this example so we've got um, an entire section in HubSpot where you can build out exactly what that lead score criteria is and how those numbers start getting added up but let's say that our threshold is going to be 20 um, in order to move it from a lead to an mql so we'll go ahead and base it off of this score here and we could even be more specific and give it a threshold maximum as well and do a HubSpot score is less than, and we'll say 40. So it needs to be in between those two numbers there. Great. So now we've got that set up and we're gonna make sure that we are able to set the appropriate life cycle stage. So we're gonna go down here under CRM and we're gonna set our property value and go to that contact and change that life cycle stage. So they are likely already a lead if they're less than 20. We're gonna go ahead and make them a marketing qualified lead once they are greater than 20 and less than 40. Perfect. So now if there's other things that you need to keep track of, adding them to a certain list, um, maybe our marketing qualified leads are then going to actually create a leads object. There's tons of other things that we can do after this, but we want to at least make sure we have some foundation ways to know that based on our lead scoring that we've set up in HubSpot, we are making sure that those life cycle stages are updating appropriately um, and then setting off whatever additional triggers are needed. Last but certainly not least, we are going to go over managing a little bit of our marketing contacts. So our marketing contacts are the people that we can send our HubSpot marketing uh, emails out to. So that is a big part of your HubSpot billing is how many contacts are you able to market to at a given time. So if people are taking uh, actions to unsubscribe or maybe they're being bounced, uh, so we can't actually deliver those emails to them. Um, unfortunately, they're not just kicked straight out of that marketing contact status. So you will continue to pay for those contacts even though they've opted out. So we wanna make sure we have this process in place so that we are staying within our limits and we're not exceeding them um, really fast with a bunch of people who actually aren't interested um, in getting those emails anymore or aren't able to because their email has now bounced. So we wanna set up some criteria here for that. So we're gonna go ahead and use a filter. Now we already have some lists that are set up. So we'll be able to just quickly use our list of memberships and search for our unsubscribed. So anyone who's completely opted out of email, we are no longer able to reach out to them. Um, they are part of this list here for our unsubscribed. And then we could even have an additional one here with our list memberships for anyone who may have hard bounced. And I also have a list set up for that segment. Um, when our hard bounced reason is known, they automatically get added here. We don't want to necessarily remove them for the CRM for historical purposes, and maybe we can get a better email for them later on, opt them back in at some point, um, or maybe they choose to resubscribe later on down the line. So I'd like to maintain that information and keep those lists active. So now that we've got those, we are going to make sure we come and we manage once again that marketing contact status here. And this time we're just going to make sure that we set them as non-marketing contact. We will go ahead and save that process. And then similarly to how we did the newsletter, we also want to make sure um, that if they uh, or if they've unsubscribed, it's automatically taken care of it. But if it's been hard bounced, it might not. So you may be able to come in and also manage um, that subscription again to go ahead and opt them out and unsubscribe them from certain communications. So once again, I'll select that marketing email one. Um, and in this one, we're just going to put not applicable because they're unsubscribing, not subscribing. So you might want to do that for the people that have bounced um, just to kind of keep that cleanliness going. But technically, I guess they didn't unsubscribe. We're just not able to reach them anymore. So that part is a little bit more optional. But we do want to make sure we have this process in place to set them as non-marketing contacts to try to keep that billing under control um, and keep that within our threshold so that we're not marketing to people who we can't actually reach out to anymore. That was a look at just a few of the workflows you can put to use in the Marketing Hub features. If you want to use workflows for sales, we have a video about seven of the most powerful workflows for sales. We've linked that up in the description below. And then if you just wanna learn all about workflows and all the things you can do with them, we do have a brand new updated workflows, everything you need to know, that's linked in the description below as well. Drop a comment, let us know if there's a future topic you wanna see in one of these videos, or maybe what your favorite workflow is, and we'll see you next week.